Island of the Dead. Fitting. Humorous, even. Is that last island the size of like a like a little tiny sliver? Island of the Dead. As if prehistoric creatures weren't enough to contend with, on this next island, Isla Muerta, you may have uh, some meteorological events, you know, storms, extreme weather, that kind of thing from time to time. As you can see, the weather on this island can be a little temperamental. First thing you're gonna wanna do is fix any damage this storm has caused. You should use a ranger team to get the park operational again. Oh, and don't forget to close any emergency shelters when it's safe to do so. Guests won't spend their hard-earned dollars huddled in a bunker underground, will they? Hmm? That must have been quite the storm. And it seems that bad weather is often a precursor to bad behavior from the dinosaurs. If you believe that everything is connected, the so-called butterfly effect, and I do believe it, by the way, then one small change is all it takes to create a series of toppling dominoes leading to rampaging dinosaurs. And they don't make a butterfly net big enough to stop them. Okay. Gotta repair all this stuff. You hate Dr. Malcolm? Why? What's wrong with Dr. Malcolm? Okay, something's damaged over here. Oh, the viewing, the gate. That's a bad thing. Yeah, repair that fence, please. Can't have a broken fence. That would be really bad. There. Fence is just wide open. Okay, I think we got all the stuff that was broken. Okay. Emergency bunker. Let's uh, close all shelters. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for any inconvenience experienced during our recent handling of anonymous events. Oh, let's let's check. Hold on. Cyberpunk's up next, not there yet, so let me know when they start like doing stuff. That's like two minutes, don't worry. We'll see that we'll look at the cyberpunk stuff. Alright, so we have no dinosaurs, right? Oh look at these tiny, tiny little cages though. That's sad. Although we do have small cages for uh, different types of dinos. Uh, where's our research? So we, this place has a the storm defense thing. Storm defense stations help protect your park's structure against storm damage. Useful, huh? Many islands are vulnerable to intense tropical storms. It can cause severe damage to your facilities. Uh, are the reward for a completed and security defense mission? Protect nearby buildings from against storm damage. How though? With magic? Okay, well it sounds like we're gonna want those. But first we're gonna want Expedition Center. Because I desperately, desperately need to get get more types of dinos going. Space is very limited on these islands, so I'm gonna be very careful of placements. New subscriber. 
Uh, thank you for subbing, Grogro. It's very nice of you. When's Nintendo? That was this morning. You didn't miss much. Smash Brothers and a couple other games. It's about what we expected. Starting. It's right. God, it is. Coverage of E3 2018. I'm Mike Mahardy here with Lucy James, as always. Hello. And we have an exciting guest and an exciting game on our stage right now. We're here with Kyle Rowley. Hello. Hi. Associate Design Director at CD Projekt. Yes, Associate Design Director at CD Projekt Red. More on Cyberpunk. Project. Yes, Cyberpunk 2077. Yes. All right, so the trailer finally released. Yeah. What, two days ago now? It's yes. been out in the open. Oh man, it's such a relief for it to finally be Cyberpunk yeah. gameplay. Yeah, I mean, we're crowded in secrecy. Yeah, everyone in the studio is super hyped. Uh, we're super excited to see the reactions and everything. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm really, ha I'm really excited about seeing people seeing what, what other stuff we have to show. So, yeah. yeah, it's been one of the most asked about games since like. So it got, if I remember correctly, it got announced even before The Witcher Three was yeah, like a known 2013, thing. Yeah, 2013. Yeah. it's been oh. a while now. Uh, so let's talk about the trailer. We we can, we can talk about gameplay, right? Uh, we yeah, can we dive can into that. About, we can okay, talk cool. about that. Well, actually, let's just dive into that. I think that's yes. what yeah. probably wants Fuck to know. Fuck all that. stuff. So what get can to you the tell gameplay. about the gameplay that the trailer might not have made clear? Okay, so a few things. So first of all, the game is a first-person perspective role-playing game. Okay. Uh, first-person perspective. The main thing that we really, you know, we're spending a lot of time on creating this, uh, like a very detailed uh, cyberpunk world set in Night City. Mm. Um, very, it's all handcrafted. Uh, there's a lot of atmosphere. You, we really want the player to feel the, the, like, the depression and the fact that like, these mega corporations are kind of stamping down on people's lives and kind of like, this, uh, and to kind of really showcase that and to kind of really immerse the player in that world, uh, we decided that the first person perspective was the best way of doing it. Um, and. Elder Scrolls so it's first person. Uh, doesn't mean it's a first person shooter or anything like that. The game is definitely a role playing game. So uh, I really want to emphasize the fact that it's a role playing game uh, with some shooter elements rather than like a first person shooter with a bit of a role play uh, layered on top. Sure. We have very deep uh, progression systems. So nice. all the things you would expect from a CD Projekt Red game. A lot, uh, multiple different progression systems actually. Skills, attributes, perks, like cyberware, obviously. So some like uh, Deus yeah, Ex. It's definitely a role playing game. In the first-person perspective, and you were saying there are, are you going to start with like a base character and build them out, or are there going to be classes that you start from, or yeah. how will that so work? The player takes on the role of V. Uh, she's like an urban mercenary hired gun. She uh, she takes on dangerous jobs, or he or she actually. She takes on dangerous oh, jobs. Okay, he or no she. one else will. Um, and as I was talking about before, we really wanted to give this feeling of uh, the city being quite oppressive. So uh, in order to kind of break free from this oppression, uh, she really has to, uh, she, she, the player's really focused on uh, com completing these different uh, missions, uh, freeing themselves from the state, uh, building their own, uh, defining their own rules. Uh, so the player plays as V. And uh, yeah, we have a full character creation system in the game. Yep. Uh, so you'll be able to define nice. your gender, whether it's male or female. Uh, you'll be able to define how you look. So we have various different body types, hairstyles, clothes, tattoos, makeups, and many, many more. And obviously, you can define your uh, what we're calling life path. It's like a backstory. And yeah. the, diff the things you define in your life path and your backstory can modify or unlock different things as you're playing through the game. Now, uh, at the start I of hate, the game, we don't I actually have any kind of crowds uh, like that. Classes, classes that you pick from. Okay. Uh, there's there, obviously in Cyberpunk 2020, there's lots of different roles that you can partake on. So corporate, rocker boy, you know, net runner, uh, techie, etc. Um, at the start of the game, you're not picking any of those classes. Basically, as you're pro progressing through the game, you're modifying and adjusting your class uh, based on the attributes, the perks you pick, the sideware you install. So it's a very fluid class system. We don't lock you in at the very start of the game or anything like that. Right. So. Sounds a lot like uh, the Deus Ex. Like Cyberpunk 2020, the property, what were some outside influences that you guys looked at for building Night City? I mean, a lot of people immediately were saying Blade Runner during the trailer, but yeah. uh, what are some of those influences that factor? Yeah, in? I mean, like as you can see in the trailer, the we focused a lot on kind of trying to build the cyberpunk atmosphere uh, in daytime because we know for a fact that we can create the kind of moody, atmospheric, noir feeling that you get uh, from Blade Runner. Yeah, his tattoo's um, kind of so eh, the trailer, but the really rest of them's to, like... Uh, showcase how you can take the cyberpunk elements of like uh, this dystopian world and kind of and and show it when the sun's out. So like, because it's not something that you ne necessarily yeah. experience in, in in traditional cyberpunk uh, media. 
Um, but that's not to say we don't have those uh, Blade Runner noir like elements. Actually, one of the terms that we're phrasing for the game story is like game noir. Like the story is very noir and and how and how it works. Um, had the feeling and the, the different kind of uh, missions and characters you're interacting yeah, with. Yeah, it definitely, it has definitely that noir sounds vibe. like so they're. Anyone's worried that we're it's going to be Deus kind of Ex, but Blade more Runner RPG than feeling, Deus Ex. It's definitely going to be there. The recent Deus Ex have been more the game actiony has a full games. Day -night cycle with weather systems, so. Uh, yeah, you get to experience both day, daytime and nighttime, and for sure we'll have that neon cityscape that people really are craving for. One of the things I was interested in finding out is how you've taken Cyberpunk 2020 and like tried to take the design elements from that and yeah. how you can translate those into a, a video game yeah, yeah. compared to a tabletop. I mean, we've been working super closely with Mike Pondsmith, um, who's like the creator of the 2020 rulebook. Um, both, I mean, for sure, there's a, a lot of aspects from the 2020 rulebook which is built into the law. So obviously, uh, we take um, the, the, the city as a whole. The city itself is based. Night City is based on the 2020 rulebook. There's a lot of characters from 2020 who will make an appearance in, in 2077. We can't go into details about how it will work or anything like that. But for sure, there'll be uh, there's characters from the law that you can, you can expect to find there. And then obviously in terms of uh, uh, the gameplay side, mm, as I said before, the classes and the roles are, are, are prevalent in the, in the game. Mm. We're kind of focusing on three main ones for the actual game itself. So uh, Netrunner, Techie, and uh, the Solo. Um, and Tabletop it's not like, game. Uh, as I said, it's not like you kind of pick one at the start and then you just, yeah. just play a bit through the way through. You basically craft your, your uh, class or your archetype as you're playing through the game. So hypothetically, you can have bits of Techie and bits of Netrunner and bits of Solo and, and you can kind of combine them. Mm, the other cool classes that are in there, like uh, in the game in general, like Rocker Boy and Corporate, they're kind of more in there from a lore perspective, from a story perspective. You'll you're you're encounter characters who represent those, role, th those uh, other alternate roles, but it's not something that we're going to allow the player to necessarily uh, play with. It's such an like a such a different aesthetic, obviously, than The Witcher, fantasy inspired, which was also based on you know like existing properties. But uh, what were some of the biggest lessons that the team took from uh, their other properties, Witcher one, two, three, three especially mm. being the you know like the, the studio was uh, you know maybe Witcher two was its breakout game, but Witcher three was just this phenomenon, right? What were some of the biggest lessons that the team found from Witcher three that really wanted to implement in Cyberpunk? I mean, for sure, the like how we build a how we build an immersive world, how, like the, the attention to detail that we that we want put in Witcher Three. We're doing the same thing again, but in like a completely new genre for us. Um, I want that T-shirt. Really, obviously, we were very proud of how the, the the story and quest system is in Witcher. So we're taking all of that stuff that we learned from Witcher Three, and we're taking it and putting it in Cyberpunk. Like um, as I said at the start, I really want to emphasize the fact that we're a role-playing game first and foremost, and, and not like a shooter or anything like that. It's uh, we choice and consequences. Looks like we're not going to see actions, any actual like game footage, but at least we get to learn the about it. You make and how that affects the story is super important. We're a narrative-driven company first and foremost. It's like the thing, the one thing that we're super passionate about and super proud about, um, and, and obviously the role-playing aspect as well. So, uh, yeah, how we built those quests and how we got the player immersed in those stories and and. Uh, yeah, those are the kind of things that we really want to translate to Cyberpunk. We, we're not really looking to build this epic tale that kind of is, say, is like a save the world kind of story. In yeah. the same vein of, uh, of, the, of, of the Witcher games, we're really focused on like personal stories, like, how, like personal stories of the people in the world and personal stories for the, for v, as, the v as, as herself as well. So. One of the things that's really special about CD Projekt is the relationship that you guys have with your fans. Like in particular, like Witcher, the way that you handle DLC, and you're very open in talking about talking to the fans about the games that you're making. Obviously, with Cyberpunk, you announced and then went quiet for so long. But even in your like sort of re-reveal trailer, you kind of apologized yeah. for that. Going forward, like what kind of relationship are you going to be having with getting details about Cyberpunk out? I mean, we're going to be. Significantly I more cannot open, wait for I think. this game. That's the, that's the first thing. I mean, that's I'm why so we're so excited, excited, really, because it's the this is the it's, it's the it's the start of us being able to talk about the game. We've been yeah. we've been working on it for quite a long time, and we have a lot of information to share with with people. And, uh, this uh, is GameSpot. So I would for sure expect them. more information being drip fed Spot out over, not the, over, the, over the next X amount of time. I don't really want to. X I can't really say, Yeah, I can't really. <laughs> say. Almost said it. Yeah, I almost <laughs> said it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, for sure we're going to be, be, we'll be, we'll be interacting he on social media, it, we'll be interacting it. on the forums, like we'll be answering questions. Obviously there's some things that we don't, we don't, we, for story is one thing that we're not very, we want right. to keep that under wraps, but we'll be more, we'll be open to talking about how the gameplay works. 
uh, what, you, what the player can do in the game. I wonder what uh, she's so, texting. Yeah. It's, we're going to definitely be more open, I would say. Can you talk a little more? I mean, you're saying it's not going to be, it's obviously not a shooter, it's an RPG, yeah. but still I think people, if you could talk about it, are probably curious about how combat will yeah. work in general. Right. Okay, yeah. So we have both oh. uh, ranged combat, so uh, we have guns, and yeah. we have oh, yeah, uh, I do see you melee on camera. based combat as well. So, and obviously, we learn quite a lot from the, the combat in Witcher yes, 3. Yes, I am single. And we're translating that, and to kind of go back to your other question, we're translating uh, that to the right lessons back. we learned in the gameplay about how, sure. how to kind of how to do melee and try and transfer it to the, the to cyberpunk. Want to drift? Mm. Obviously, it's very different in the fact that we're down doing it from a first-person perspective right. rather than from the third person. But uh, the lessons that we learned in which we can definitely translate. Um, yeah, so uh, in, in weapons-wise, we have uh, basically there's three main types of weapons that you can, uh, three kind of, bra kind of uh, gameplay-themed style weapons that we have. We have power weapons, which are focused on like, like traditional weapons that you would have nowadays. So they're, uh, when you when you fire them, they, they we may have for example exaggerated hit reactions and staggers to kind of emphasize the hit impacts, and then we have uh, tech weapons which are kind of focused on uh, penetrating through walls and uh, <laughs> objects and NPCs and stuff like that, and then we have uh, smart <laughs> weapons which are basically weapons which can track and follow targets around the game. We we were again because and I, I keep going back to it, but because we're a role playing game and we understand some people aren't necessarily. Uh, Averse to Twitch-based combat, who like playing role-playing Twitch combat? games, we tried to design, for example, the smart weapons around being something that people can pick up and play casually without necessarily have to be super efficient with uh, shooting people in the head. With like you know more Twitch-based reaction-based combat, so we're trying to cater to both audiences there with that. So, yeah. So horses are gone, but it looks like yeah. there's flying cars. Is that how we're going to be getting around? Uh, we will be getting around in vehicles. Okay. We're only really, we're only really talking about right now is that for sure we're going to have uh, motor motorcycles and we're going to have uh, drivable cars. Okay. But the other other vehicles that are potentially in the game, we're not talking too much about that stuff okay. right now. I mean, we have them obviously in the trailer. Yeah. The the AVs, um, and for sure they're going to be uh, big narrative. There'll be going to be narrative set pieces where we utilize AVs a lot, but we're not talking about anything about the actual like. Okay. Yeah. So when, as you mm -hmm. play as V, is V going to be voiced? Yeah, so we have a both a male uh, and female voiced V. Mm -hmm. uh, Hell yeah. Uh, Shazar, we'll be uh, right back to Jurassic Park. We We're just watching this interview uh, real studio, fast. It's live it's right now. We feel we can create more interesting and deep stories. Like we're very, I don't, our stories are quite character driven. So for us having uh, someone uh, who's voiced and is a named character, it allows us to build relationships better with characters. So right. that's why we decided to go with a, a named character rather than necessarily having like a blank slate with uh, no name or, and just can do completely whatever you want with. So V, in a sense, does have a, her own kind of personality, but you shape it as a player. So depending on how your backstory that you select the star and how you interact with characters, you can kind of shape V as a person as you're playing through the game. So. The cyberpunk aesthetic and genre, I guess, is so much less established than fantasy. What's it like working with cyberpunk and being able to do this kind of like dystopia as opposed to this fantasy world? I mean, uh, I think that he even was proud Witcher, of that question. 3, you see that we were like kind of more dark fantasy than necessarily high fantasy. Yeah. Um, so I think we're quite good at telling stories which aren't the most uh, you know happy uh, uh, stories in the world. Uh, I think the biggest difference for us is obviously the fact that uh, the feeling uh, of the world Nailed is just it. very different from what we did in Witcher Three, and the feeling of the world and trying to understand the technology that is in the world. And 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 we spend an awful lot of time. And it's something that, as a studio, again, we, we, we're quite proud of, is that we spend a lot of time on figuring out details of the world, its law, making sure it's believable, it has a purpose. Like, um, And, I mean, Cyberpunk's actually set in an alternative, an alternative timeline to our own. So it's not <laughs> like in 2077, it's a future based on our future as it is right now. It's kind of based on a future Why from like the 1890s Cyberpunk What are you going to do future. with so that? It's not like we can just take what we see here and try and transfer it sure. to the game. We have to reinvent <laughs> things like how it was based on what how it was before in, in, old, in previous cyberpunk literature. Uh, is it like a Southern California influenced area? Yeah, so it's set in Night City, which is on the, it's on the coast of California. Gotcha. Um, it's in between actually Los Angeles and, and, and San Francisco. Okay, cool. Uh, but it's a fictional city. Yeah. So again, we can, it gives us liberties to He's basically <laughs> uh, do as we want. Obviously there's heavy inspiration from like Los Angeles and uh, San Francisco and San Diego and all those kind of things. We, we have all those elements in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, and a bit like in 
uh, really wanted to kind of emphasize the fact that the, it's, there's six unique districts inside the city. So it's not like when you're, when you're traveling through, it's going to feel the same all the time. It kind of comes back to my, what I was talking about when we want it, you, you'll have the noir feeling in your, and you'll have the day to night cycle. You'll also have kind of more up kept areas with the like high rich yeah, corporate. She's there, sustain, so you're like, ooh. But you'll have areas grill. like Pacifica, which are kind of totally overrun with gangs, and it's just like they kind of own the streets. It's very depressing. Like poverty is like everywhere. So it's like you're definitely, as you're traveling through the city and, and you're the different districts, you'll definitely feel the difference between the districts. So it won't feel the same wherever you're playing. Okay. So. And we really want to encourage the player to explore Night City. So, and the other big difference, obviously, is that with Witcher, it was very like wide landscape, like horizontal, whereas for Cyberpunk, we're really pushing verticality more. So Ooh. we have a lot of buildings you can enter which have a lot of floors in them, so you can explore. Ooh. We have some things called like mega buildings, which are kind of like these huge complex micro societies in on themselves. They have that like vendors awesome. and shops and gunsmiths and apartment blocks and all that kind of stuff, all inside like one big building. So Hear that, when you exploring the world, you go inside you a mega a building, a you're city. like, okay, now I'm going to explore inside here and see what I can find. There's like stories to be told, there's like quests to find, missions to go on, stuff like that, so. Are you able to talk at all about like, does V level up and stuff as she goes along? How is that gonna work within the context of like such a huge world with side quests, main quests? Mm -hmm. uh, are things gonna scale to your level? Can you over level yourself? Uh, we're, not, uh, we're not doing she any kind of level, level scaling really. I mean, ba we basically have two forms of experience. We have like uh, standard experience, which you'll gain from completing kind of core missions. And then we have what we call street cred, which is uh, an alternate experience you gain from uh, doing side <laughs> missions. Right. Uh, so, and actually, when you're completing both main mission, uh, main quests and side quests, you kind of get a bit of both. But we kind of separate that we split the, the amount of each XP depending on if you're doing a main or side mission. Okay. So main missions kind of get core XP, and si and side missions get the street cred. Um, street cred is basically a, a way for you to, based on your street cred level. Uh, you can unlock different vendors and we'll unlock different fixes. Uh, sorry, fixes are kind of like mission givers in, in, in this world, right? So they'll give you jobs to do and you get access to new fixes as you're kind of leveling up your street cred, so. Okay. Well, Kyle, unfortunately, that's all the time we have, but thank no. you so oh. much for shedding more light on Cyberpunk. I awesome. Yeah, I know everybody no. has had questions for years now, so <laughs> it's nice to be getting some of them answered, definitely. Cool, thanks a lot, man. It's been yeah. awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely, Great. and have a good rest of the week, and uh, I might or might not, but definitely will Maybe get to play the game later today. <laughs> I'm excited about. Yes. What? But anyway, thank you so much, Kyle. Oh, no worries. This. Prick. Thank you very much. And if you're at home, keep around GameSpot. Stick around GameSpot. We will have the amazing adventures of Captain Spirit on very shortly. We'll see you then. He gets to be attractive and he gets to play the game? Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. I want to play the I want to play the game behind closed doors so I can be like, hey chat, guess what? <laughs> Prevent power outage for ten consecutive minutes. Oh, uh, contract science. I've got something for you. If you're interested. Yeah, it looks like there is a gameplay demo, but only behind closed doors. Which sucks. <laughs> it looks like we have more access to different species now. Ankylosaurus, Corthesosaurus. It's a lot of new ones. Velociraptor. <gasps> oh, shit. I don't know if you can move dinosaurs between islands or not. We'll have to figure that out as we go. What could possibly go wrong with Velociraptors? What could possibly go wrong? This is not a very big pen. I don't feel like that's too tiny, but what 
We do need some dinosaurs in here. Uh, how much does it need? Yeah, let's... Let's raise a carnivore. Boop. Wait, that's not electric fence, is it? Oh, nope. Oh, that's fine. It's fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? It'll be fine. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be just great. Just great. We we'll also need uh, a feeding trough. We'll put it right in front of the uh, window for the guests to see. And then over here, we'll have a herbivore feeding trough for the guests over here. And we'll raise a couple of derpy looking dudes. Oh yeah, you can upgrade fence, that's right. I forgot about that. Oh, we're broke, whoops. It's fine, we just gotta do contracts. Do I have a research center? Oh no. It didn't come with a research center. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh god, no. That's. Well, um. <laughs> Does anyone in chat have an extra $300,000 just that I could have? Anyone check at $300,000 for me? Just a small loan, you know. Where are my fossils going? Like, I, I don't, I don't, I can't access the inventory of fossils. I don't think. Do I take checks? Yes, of course. Okay, well, let's release our dino. <laughs> so ugly. So ugly. Dinosaur, the Edmontosaurus, was originally uncovered at a site in Canada. I'll let you guess where. Fascinating. The T-Rex thinks these are delicious. And who's to argue? Ah. And a second one. Boop. And her, his friend. Aww. He's hungry. He's like Dan Fat Delicious New subscriber. Aren't they beautiful? It looks like he wants to have a friend. That good sized grassland. They live in large social groups. Lights have dinosaurs from other species nearby. Ooh. 
Well, then let's do some... We don't have much money, so let's do some cheap ones. A couple of these babies. What's with the music? If you're having audio problems, uh, pause and unpause. It'll fix it. And now the big guy. <laughs> Not a T-Rex, but a miniature form of one. Carnivore, I see. This time, a Ceratosaurus. There are distinctive spines that run down its back, and a bladed horn on its head. <laughs> Just what you don't want to run into when you're out there alone, or in a group. Indeed. Mistakes were made. Now release Dan Derp. Another one. Yay. Derpy. Derpy and Derpish. Oh, they're hanging out. Kim. Kim and Edna. Just hanging out, just chilling. <laughs> okay, our money's going up, which is a good sign. Guests are in the park. Uh, let's give them something to buy. Gift shop. Everyone needs the access to the gift shop. Um. That will give me more money. Yeah, gift shop uh, way over there. It's fine. Well, most all the dinosaurs are over here, so they gotta go. Th they gotta pass the gift shop to get to the carnivore, which is what everyone wants to see. And that's a wrap. Thanks, brah. Let's do a security contract. It's a dangerous world. In this place. Makes it more dangerous. Incubate three this triceratops. This contract can eggs. help us with security here. Three triceratops eggs. I know these animals are considered product, but don't treat them that way. I know. Yeah, this is the second island. You get uh, five or six islands that you unlock as you play. Yeah, the the guests don't. I don't think they really put a lot of time into the guests. They just sort of walk around, randomly go to a building, and go in. I don't think they put much. There's not a lot of micromanagement with the guests yet. They need to work on that. They sort of plop down a building, and then that's it. They're just sort of there. Seems like seems like there's less of less with them than there was in even in Planet Coaster. And like this, it's like this one says there's 64 people inside, but when you look inside, there's only like five. Doesn't make such sense. I need 400,000 for a research center, so we're getting there. We're making money though. Business is good, but it can always be better. Consider this contract. 
Thoughts on first person only Cyberpunk? Um, yes, please. I love Elder Scrolls, which I always play first person. And if it's going to be, they seem like they're going to have shooter mechanics, so first person's fine for that kind of game. Would have been nice to have an optional third person, but it's okay. But if it's more first person shoot shooter and not and not so much uh what should we call it uh cover shooter then first person's fine. I like third person for cover shooters. How about some fast food? That will generate money, as the research center will just drain my money. Okay, and the guests are also going to want a uh, clothing shop. Go here, right here, but I gotta add another power station. Okay, we need to add a power hub. The substation mechanics a little tedious, but it works. No power. Doing the improbable, and you're doing the impossible. Thanks. You're welcome. Reputation rewards, this toy shop. This entertainment division is excelling because of you, so you're getting a reward on everything. Well, thank you. I've always wanted a toy shop. Now we can sell little toy dinos, and everyone in chat gets one for free. For the low, low price membership, which is only a hundred bits. <laughs> awesome, yes, hundred bits for free dinosaurs. Starpoint was like Skyrim, but with guns. It sounds to me like they're going for like a Fallout kind of feel. But even more RPG than Fallout. They just give one bit and then add three z text zeros afterwards. <laughs> Clever. Clever. <laughs> Yeah, it's clever. You got I'll give you that. Yeah, it's like Fallout with guns. New subscriber. Da, 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 da. Okay, New now we subscriber. Now we just need some more money. I think we can go ahead and make a couple friends. We're gonna make a couple more derps. I think they'll like that. <laughs> okay, I gotta run to the bathroom real fast. I'll be right back in a second. You guys can watch the dinos for a minute.
All right, back. They wanted to make three triceratops. That's a lot. Gus grab a new contract. Let's see. Let's do another security one. Let's not argue over the small stuff. Looking at the big picture, this is a solid contract. Fine. Uh, you have to look at their like their little thing here and be like, oh, there's not enough water, or there's too much population, or. I think they all want a little more water, so let's let's add some more water to their enclosure. Add some more shrubbery as well. Maybe like a solo tree around here. Now they got more water. Fallout 76 interview going on right now. I don't feel like being disappointed right now, but thank you for letting me know. <laughs> That's right for that door. I mean, you know, incubation failed. Oh, let's throw it away then. Oh, shit. Well, now we can afford the uh, research center, so let's do that. Yeah, I, the more I hear about Fallout 76, the less I'm getting interested in it. I don't know. It just seems like it's not my kind of game. It seems very multiplayer, PvP focused. Yeah, when he said that you can't turn PvP off, I was like, Todd, why? Why? Come on, Todd. Come on, Todd, bro. Yeah, then he's like, then no NPCs. At least no human NPCs. That means there could be robots and maybe ghouls or something, but no humans. So no raiders. No Brotherhood of Steel. <laughs> New subscriber. Uh thank you for subbing beer thumping. Thank you very much. All right, now that we got that, we can send out more expeditions. Try to get more uh, dino types. We're out of power. Shit. Uh-oh. Okay, we need another power station. 500,000 dollars. Oh, is that all? Well, let's turn this off for now. Don't need that on. I didn't mean to do research station. I meant to do the other one. The science lab. For fossils, but it's okay. New subscriber. Thank you, Hex. Thank you for that sub. Enclosures. Oh, another viewing platform and a better fence as well. New subscriber. New building. Monorail. Two million dollars. <laughs> Jesus Christ. New subscriber. Whew. Whew. Okay, I don't need that building. I need the other one. The 
the fossil center. That's what I meant to build before. Not the science center. I meant to build the fossil one. There was like a spot it fit for like a second. I saw it. Yeah, I don't need that research center for a while, so I'll get rid of it for now. No. It fits right there, so if I turn it around. Move it back up a tiny bit. Right there. Uh oh. What's that? Storm coming. Uh oh. Emergency shelter. Okay, storm defense station. Nice centralized spot. Hurry. Well, if we get it built fast, it'll protect all the buildings. Okay, turn that off for now. Get it built fast. The perfect time to start building emergency stuff for a hurricane is when the hurricane starts. We all know that, right? Okay. Literally, all those buildings are protected now. This is great. All those buildings are protected, too. Apparently not that one, for some reason. Okay, hurricane currently on. Go ahead and research fossils, please. Oops, sell those for money. Beautiful. Hmm. Velociraptor. Oh shit. Oh shit, son. Oh damn. It begins. Okay, we could open the shelter. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for experience during our recent handling of Okay. Um This can be turned back on. Or not. Uh oh. We need more power. Okay, I can actually afford another plant now. Not that I want to build another plant, they're expensive. And they're big. Not a lot of space, but we'll put one in the corner over here. another enclosure too like to put more dinos in it's like we got a lot of space over here maybe how how did IGN give this a 4.8 well uh, have you seen any explosions or killings or battle royale mechanics
And look how much water there is. So we already started at a seven point something because of all that water. Four point eight, too much dinosaur. That's a job well done. Beautiful. But that means we could turn everything back on now. And let's go get some more Velociraptor DNA. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. What could possibly go wrong with making Velociraptors? I'll tell you, absolutely nothing. Perfectly fine. You love the dino emotes? Well, thank you. Julie did a great job on them, didn't she? If you see Julie in chat, make sure you give her a little less than three. Okay, we need uh, Ranger Team 1 to pair that. Pair that one too. I really, really like her Dan Troll. She did a really good job with that one, too. Or did she? <laughs> Whoops, I hit the wrong, I'm oh, sorry. What did I do? What happened? Nope, sorry, sorry. Wrong button, wrong button. Less than a minute left for more Velociraptor DNA. We need a research center soon. You know what? Ceratoras could use a friend. Let's modify the genome too. The rating goes up a lot if we give them a different pattern. We can make him more resistant to disease. And the rating goes up. We do that. All right. Let's go ahead and make a friend. $700,000. We have $700,000. Jesus. Never mind. Apparently we aren't doing that. Jesus. Holy crap. Okay, we need some more Velociraptor DNA to make a successful Velociraptor. Alright, let's go ahead and start researching. Some more Velociraptor DNA. Beautiful. And even some more. Get that going. All right, my, let's go. We'll start the Triceratops for money. The three hundred thousand each, though. Jesus. Go ahead and make one. Make a little Dan fat. I think. Uh, Miss Dragula, thank you for that sub. How are you doing over here, buddy? 
You want more friends. You want more grassland. Does that mean more like shrubberies like that or just plain grass? Velociraptor. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Three words. Contract you yes. Thanks. Yeah, Velociraptor is available. This is how it all ends though. You start making Velociraptors and then everyone starts dying. Incubate dinosaur. Velociraptor. Six hundred thousand dollars for a Velociraptor. And they start learning how to open doors and then it's all over. It's all over after that. Ooh, big money. Big money again. Let's extract a little bit of DNA we have out of this and that. All right. If you ever Come want on, to baby. Build a situation where these animals will truly trust you, then there are times when you have to let them run free, even when that means they want to kill, because that's what they need to do. Fake Chris Pratt. These enclosures, I feel like I should make them, I should expand them. Actually, how far out can I build? Oh, the edge of the park is right there. I do have a very large section over here for an enclosure. But I think I'm going to go ahead and expand the herbivore thing out some more. Let's uh, let's start by removing the trees so I can see underneath. All right, so now let's go ahead and try to flatten the land a little bit. Even that up. It's weird watching the land just move. Dinos can... Wait a minute, the raptors could probably climb the trees and jump over the fence. Oh no, I just thought about that. That's scary. Okay, let's send you out first to get more DNA for us. Go, get, go over there. Alright, Ranger Station. Can you please resupply the food, please? Yeah, just go in there and feed the hungry, hungry carnivore. I'm sure that will go... That is going to go just fine, I'm sure. What could possibly go wrong with that? Just go in the cage over there and just... Feed him. You know what? I thought of something super smart. Watch this. What? Maybe I have to build out a little bit. And then put another fence, another gate, right there. Look at that! I'm so triggered. Ah! I'm tr 
Bro, why did it make me... Okay, okay, hold on. Just... <laughs> Obstructed, why? Okay, build out slightly. Then... Straight across, straight across, like that. Oh, so much better. Right in the center. The land's a little uneven, so let's... What? What? What was that? Don't do that. Holy shit. Did you never do that again, please? Thank you. Requires bracken poisoning to medicate. Oh, I can't. Oh, Derpy's gonna die. I can't cure him. Look at that double fence, though. That's sexy. Okay. This is exactly what I needed. Well nice. Done. Beautiful. Yeah, I need a research station to start researching again. Research center. Exactly where we had it before. Well, I need, I'm going to need a research center eventually. Yeah, I know it's a lot of money, but I need it. Okay, uh, once this, once this fixes, I can research the cure, hopefully. It's almost done. Once it's done, then we can research the cure and ho hopefully cure him. Have the carnivore eat. Oh no, it's spreading. Oh crap. Uh oh. Uh, research. Bracken poisoning. Hurry. Take a minute. Don't worry, we got it. It's, it's happening. I can't move dinosaurs yet, which is a problem. We need to, that one expensive hot, uh, center. Keep going. I can't move dinosaurs around until I get the big expensive thing. Actually, I know what I can do. Hey, come here, boys. Come here. Go kill some people in the park. Go ahead. Go kill them. They're or they're herbivores. They're not gonna do anything. It's fine. Okay, there we go. Hurry. Dal, Ranger. Hurry, go. Medical emergency, watch out, people. If you run them over while someone's sick, it's okay. Medicine? Oh god, I have to- You need to medicate that animal if you are to save it. Are you kidding me? I have to shoot it with medicine? Come here, boys. It's okay. Administered. Objective completed. Shot off target. Get 
Got it. Asset treated. Woo! Got it. Okay. There we go. Nailed it. <laughs> the bullets drop so fast. It's like a they're like coming out of a slingshot or something. I don't. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I don't know why they drop off so fast. Yeah, they're like, Ew. even a dark gun would shoot a little farther than that before dropping so fast. Oh, more Velociraptor. Yeah, let's do that. All right, let's research some more DNA. Wrong one. This one. We'll sell that for Jesus Christ. Hell yeah. Big money. <gasps> Dilophosaurus. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh man. Chat. It's time. It's time. <laughs> hmm. New subscriber. Thank you for subbing, Ramonix. Thank you for that prime sub. Scheduling. New subscriber. Uh, thank you for subbing, Panjarber. Thank you very much. Those are expensive upgrades, Jesus. New subscriber. Ranger accuracy upgrade. Sure. Here's a chance to really prove yourself. New subscriber. The more buildings we have, the more chance to increase our revenue. That's true. Oh, thank you, uh, Shufflebot and Ergot for those prime subs. Thank you guys. Yeah, we need to complete these contracts. I guess we need to make more Triceratops, but they're expensive. New subscriber. It's only 300,000. But this Velociraptor was done. It should make me a lot of money because people would be like, Velociraptor, what? Let's go see that shit. New subscriber. Uh, let's see here. Let's upgrade our fence. New subscriber. Let's upgrade our fence here. New subscriber. Because uh, Velociraptors are going to be like, you know what, humans? Fuck your fence. I'm just going to go kill all those humans over there. Can I have an electric fence in the water? That seems like a bad idea. Seems like a real bad idea. But looks like I can though, somehow. I don't... Okay. Well, there we go. Yeah, electrified fence un in submerged water. Well, once the dino goes in to drink, we'll, we'll figure it out if it's electrified or not. <laughs> if we get a fried dino, then yes. If not, then we're fine. Oh, they just got power. They're New fine. subscriber. Uh, thank you, Shenjo, for the prime sub. Thank you. All right. Yes, don't worry. I'm. We're sparing no expense on our part. Go ahead and do that, guy. 
Yes, we're gonna do we're gonna do Jurassic Park quotes all goddamn day. New subscriber. Oh, thank you, Rock Racket HS, for that sub. New building available. Oh, monorail. Two million dollars though. Jesus Christ. Two million dollars for that. Heavy steel standard fence. I'll wait though. Okay, I think I have enough for a triceratops soon. Uh oh. New subscriber. Here it goes. <laughs> These are six hundred thousand dollars each. Raptors get a bad rap because people don't understand that they are and always will be alpha predators. Our job is to help them. The raptors understand that we are as well. <laughs> I'm sure they do. I'm sure they know that. Uh oh. What? What are you guys doing? What you guys do? Are you socializing or are you gonna kill each other? Uh oh. Uh oh. Don't. Don't eat him! Don't! Bad! He cost $600,000! Don't you dare! Don't fucking. You know how expensive he was, you piece of shit! Okay, luckily Alpha won. Yeah, ra a raptor by himself will not attack anything. He needs a group. Look at him, he's looking at the helicopter like, what the hell's up with that shit? I think he just, they just had like a little, little like, hey, you stay over there, I'll stay over here, and we'll stay out of each other's way, okay, brah? Or they were like, hey, yo, dude, let's kill all the humans. Let's pretend like we're fighting. They'll come in and break us up and they'll just all around them all. All right, let's see. Let's sell that one. That one's worth a bunch of money. Hell yeah. Velociraptor DNA. Do that. Dilophosaurus. More Velociraptor. And then more Dilophosaurus. Oh yeah, herbivore expansion. That's what we were working on. Forgot. We were, we were expanding this. I got distracted. From the awesome raptor. All right, we gotta. We need to raise the land up over here, though. Actually, we could probably leave it the way it is. Just put trees there. Nope. That looks bad. That is a lot more space now. Now we can knock out that inner wall. Ugliest fence ever. You're the ugliest fence ever.
Now we can fit a whole lot more we dinos in here. We need to get dinosaurs here. the right environment if they're going to thrive. I'm sorry, that was mean. I apologize. I do love chat. You guys are great. Mostly just put a forest there. Then we can also expand the water. Actually, let's put more water in here as well. Get rid of the trees, actually. Put a lot more water here. And then remove the trees out of the water. And then put a couple more trees over here. Yeah, the the buffer zone's gone, but there there's an electrified fence. The chance of them getting across is not good. And let's doesn't look very natural. If I get a separate carnivore tent, I can remove this, put move all of them somewhere else, and then put another closure. Comfort center is open grassland, forest cover, social groups, enclosure population. When below threshold, all dinosaurs attempt to escape, breaking fences, attacking guests. Oh, really? Their comfort is perfect. We need another. The veloc the Velociraptor needs a friend. They they're very pack oriented. So let's. He needs friends. He needs at least two more friends, so they can be a small pack. We have, and then we need some more Triceratops as well, eventually. Yeah, a million dollars are worth of Velociraptors, it's fine. Uh, there's no breeding because if you remember your lore from Jurassic Park, they're all female. Even if we do a little bit of The Last of Us 2, they still won't make any more babies. Unless life finds a way. Life finds a way. Okay, let's uh, research more fossils. Money. What's that Ankylosaurus? That guy looks cool, he's like very rocky. And uh, Corythosaurus. Oh, Dan Sad. Okay, we need another Triceratops. Ooh. Couple more minutes on the Velociraptors and then everyone's gonna die. Huh. Huh. Enjoy your time, people, while you can. The Velociraptors will figure out a way. They'll test the defenses and then they'll escape. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, if you want to, you can always open the doors, let the the animals escape, and start messing with messing with your place. Their socials down. Their oh food. Hold on. So let's do enclosures. Oh shit! I need more. Sell that. Okay, quickly. He's gonna start attacking shit. We need a live bait feeder. They'll like that. Live goat. Oh, they're almost done. Okay, keep going, getting more stuff. Dead fat number two. Hey, girl. Ladies and gentlemen, Why pay for a live bait feeder if you can just open the doors? That's true. Oh, she's hungry. That raptor is very upset. I don't know why. He wants... He's not, he doesn't have enough water. So let's expand the water. Out further. Okay, his food is getting met now. Oh no, storm's coming. And they're ready. Uh oh, how perfect. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Oh, it's a big storm. Open shelter. And release the second one. <laughs> Thank you, Stealth for the sub. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, now they should be happy that they have a group. We do need to expand the fence out here, though. Just like we did with the herbivores. We need a bigger carnivore fence. I think we make, like, a butt shape here. It'd be fine. Round this off a bit. Uh, fence... I'm liking this game? I'm liking it a lot. It's definitely not a 4.8 game. I must have been in a grumpy mood when they did the review of this. Okay, now we knock out this fence here. All right, now we expand the tree coverage back here. So they got like their forest to look through. Oh yeah, let the people out so we have food. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize 
Okay, shelter. What was that? Don't do that, please. Don't roar like that. I can't I can't see what they're doing. Making lots of noise over there. Then we should have another viewing station over here since they can now view that, not the other side. No! The Velociraptor thing is not a petting zoo. <laughs> no. Uh, I think that's a hell no to that statement. No. Hell no. Is it a petting zoo? I mean, you could, but you only do it once. Let's have a second feeder back here. So that way the two different animals can hang out. Let's have another uh, viewing station back here. have to expand the power coverage probably back over here bit of a just a tiny pond right here and a couple more trees just to and some shrubs they're out here there now that, let's see how much better they're doing now their social is good now they're Completely comfortable. Their food's a little low, but he's gonna eat now. Hopefully the Velociraptor is... All right, let's go ahead and send out for some more DNA. That guy looks so cool. I need to get one of him. That one's almost done. That's a real thick one for Corythorosaurus. Beautiful. Okay. Now the herbivores have a lot more room, so the carnivores. Let's see if you're good. Forest, grassland, water. Forest, grassland, water. Okay, they're both good. Yeah, you can only queue six fossils at once, so I did let, let it go. All right, now we can cue the last one. Boop. And let's research um, stronger fences. If 
Finally, that contract's finally done. Thank you for the 47 month resub, Satellizer. That's impressive work. Well, thank you. Where are the other two raptors? I don't know. They're plotting something. I don't. They kind of vanish into the forest. New subscriber. The Doughboy Game, and thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. I think they're planning and testing the defenses. New subscriber. You are called. Fatty. New subscriber. Let's try to flatten this a bit. Whoa. It was a lot more flat than it looked like it was. Jesus. Well, now that, that feeding thing looks way out of place. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, let's uh let's remove that. Flatten. Spin the water a little bit more. And put the live bait feeder back over. So they can kind of hunt for it. They might want to feel like they want to hunt, so. Beautiful. Uh, we have the uh, static bait just here and there. The goat just runs all over the damn place, so you can't really control where he goes. See, once he spawns, he just runs all over the place. <laughs> All right, go ahead and we'll send you right over there. Feeder resupply request received. Yep. Fill that Understood. one too. Uh, we need more fossils. Can you play as the goat? Uh, no. But there is a game where you can call Goat Simulator. Oh, we can sell that for big money. Did that for big money. Perfect. Research those babies. That goat's in hell? What? He just... He's surrounded by dinosaurs. He gets to live for a little while until they decide they want a nom nom. <gasps> oh, we can finally build the Hyangosaurus. New subscriber. Small planet that lived in China during the Middle Jurassic period. Ground herbivore. All right, let's make our first one. Can we build it? Of course we could build it. If you build it, they will come. Let's do a security contract. People like to feel secure. That's our job. This contract enhances our ability to do so. Perfect. IGN gave Goat Sim 8 out of 10, and they gave this game a 4.8. <laughs> oh, IGN. I don't understand you sometimes. Hmm, let's see. Incubation speed, success rate increase. Hmm. We definitely want improved power, so let's do that.
two different people write the review. People have different opinions. Well, it's true with reviews, like their opinions. Like one guy may hate a game entirely, but that's the only guy reviewing it, so they get this big negative score. But then other people love it. Just depends. But this is by uh, by far not a perfect game at all. It's got a lot of flaws, but it's got charm too. I think it. it I think over time, as they patch and add to this, it's going to become a really fun game. But for right now, it's. I'm enjoying the base for what it is. Hmm. All right, here's our first one. Well, one thing is you can't fast forward time. So you can't, like, speed up some of the slow points of the game and stuff. Beautiful. Ah, Wyangasaurus, another member of the Stegosaurians. He's not that big at all. It looked like he was going to be huge, but he's not that big. He needs. He wants a friend, though. Okay. Okay, he wants a friend. We're going to give him a friend. He will not be lonely, goddammit. He wants a friend. He's going to get a goddamn friend. Yeah, he's very sad right now. He's like, I'm the only one. Uh, there's no breeding because they're all female. I mean, they could try, but it's not going to do anything. <laughs> they could try to breed all they want, and nothing's going to happen from it, though. Uh, let's go for... Let's see what other animals we're working towards. Probably a, this one's getting kind of full of animals. Population's fine. Actually, their population seems fine here. No one's upset. Yeah, no one. Even the Triceratops aren't upset by how many there are. Okay, we need some more derps. A couple more derps. We almost have a perfect gene, a uh, perfect uh, d DNA thing for them, though. Well, let's see what we're close to and what we can improve. Let's see. From where I'm standing, that's job done. So strut of strut of blah blah blah. It takes blah, blah. a special kind of person to do this job and do it well. The security division is rewarding you because on Islam Werder, you are clearly that person. <sighs> Thank you. Okay. If we can get the rest of the DNA from harvesting this stuff. If we get enough DNA, then we can start... Uh, we can have a perfect DNA specimen. Uh, let's go entertainment. Remember, the show must go on. This contract makes that possible. Uh, take a picture with two serat... Ceratorus? I only have one, though. Uh-oh. Well... I guess we could make him a friend. Rip money, though. Rip money. Raptors are screwed. Friend is ready. They did such a good job of the movement of the dinosaurs. They feel so lifelike. even need another feeder because they're trying to get full in there 
Oh, another feeder. Uh, next to the water over here. Oh, he's still in view of the uh, the hub. It hits that over there. It's kind of weird that they, like... They should be able to eat the grass and stuff. Well, I guess they are. They're, like, they're grazing a bit. Yeah, Dino Feed is $150,000. I don't know why. It just... It just puts out a bush, and that's it. Let's check on our raptors. Where, where are they? That's scary. Where did they go? No, that's the big guy. Hello? Where are you guys? There's one. There's one Velociraptor, but... Where are the others? Are they in here somewhere? Oh, there's another one. <laughs> well, they're perfectly happy right now. Wait a minute. What's that sound behind me in my office? Wow! If I was easy to impress, you'd be doing it with these numbers. Clever girl. Clever girl. Velociraptor's first stream. You came to free the ball, I know. Super smart. Just kill me and you have uh, free reign of the whole park. Okay, let's go ahead and... Uh, Research some more genetic uh, bio markers. Would you sub to a Velociraptor? I would. I would tier three sub to a Velociraptor that was able to stream. <laughs> New subscriber. Thank you for subbing, Nerd Gwen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Rip Raptors. <laughs> He's got a friend now. Rip Raptors. That's a sweet paint job on that guy. Oh! <gasps> We have a hundred percent genome on that guy now. One hundred percent. Resilience. Sure. Lifespan, boom. Incubate. We'll do two. They like big groups of them. They like to hang out in big groups. 
Okay, now I gotta go take that photo. I gotta f somehow get that photo without dying. Sorry, important photo coming through. Uh, you have five islands at once, but you unlock each one one at a time. That's a good photo. New subscriber. That's a great photo. I myself have dabbled in photography. Nothing as good as this, mind you. I need two. I need two of the big guys together, though. <laughs> 